Hello, everyone. Welcome to KubeCon 2020, and welcome to the session of Multi-Tenant Networking for Kubernetes. My name is Yinxiong. I'm with FutureWay Technologies. In this talk today, Jeref, who is now with Microsoft, he and I will present a multi-tenant scalable network solution for Kubernetes. We hope you will enjoy the talk, and at the end of the session, hopefully you'll learn something and interested in contributing to this project or building your own network solutions. With that, let's get started. This is the agenda for today's talk. I will give an introduction and some background on the project, why we're doing this and what's the context. I will also talk about current network model in Kubernetes and introduce you the high level design of our new multi-tenant model for Kubernetes. We have a forked version of Kubernetes called Arctos. You can consider Arctos as a multi-tenant uh, Kubernetes. I will introduce Arctos more in next slides. After that, Sharaf will give you how we implement the multi-tenant network model in Kubernetes and introduce you the Misa project. Misa is a virtual network solution that has both control plane and a data plane based on the XDP technology. So MISA project is a part of umbrella project called Centeros. Centeros project includes two independent projects. One is called Arctos, one is called MISA. MISA again is what we discussed today in this talk. However, I'd like to briefly introduce Arctos project first so that you understand some of the context. As I mentioned earlier, Arctos project is a forked version of Kubernetes with a major change in design. There are three goals for Arctos project. First, we want to unify VM or container orchestration and the runtime. For that, we expand product part definition and then make the runtime agent, which is Kubernetes, to be a unified agent that supports both VM and containers. Second, we want Kubernetes to support from 50K to 100K nodes in a cluster. For that, we have to partition Kubernetes components such as API server, schedulers, controllers, and ETCD. Third, we want to build a true multi-tenant platform. So we design a multi-tenant solution for Kubernetes, including a new tenant objects and a new network model. So we believe with those three goals, Arctos takes Kubernetes to the next level, making a true cloud infrastructure platform. So back to the main topic we have today, which is MISA. MISA network solution is trying to address the following problems. And first we want to provide a virtual network solution for Kubernetes so that the Kubernetes part that from different tenants that will reside in a different virtual network. Second, we want to address the problem of fast provisioning of network resources for pods. It's basically how to get a pod ready as quick as possible from network perspective. Third, we want to have a scalable virtual network solution to support the networking within a cluster of more than 100K hosts. And that's the problems we try to solve from MISA perspective. As most of, most of you already know that current network model for in Kubernetes is a flat model. It's a single address space and they share the single DNAs. And then by default, every part or containers can communicate with every other part or containers in the cluster. So by default, there's no multi-tenant from network perspective. Kubernetes introduced network policy to isolate container or part each other. However, network policy is not secure or as not strong isolated as virtual network can do. For example, network policy does not prevent packet sleeping, put in somewhere where the traffic is passing by and extract the information, intensity of the information or data out of the packet. Additionally, some of network policies are implemented based on Unix feature called NetFilter. 
which use IP table rules. In reality, IP table rules could get huge and then cause overhead and increase network, network latency. Not a security issue, but it's a not desirable as far, uh, solutions we want. So in Arctos, we introduce a network object, a new CRD object that represents a VPC or subnet. Each part to be created has to be associated with a network object. And each network object has its own IP address space. So paths or containers created in the different network are naturally isolated with the network boundary. As you can see uh, from this diagram on the slides. Now within each network, you can still use network policies to manage network security within a ten single tenant. The new network object we introduce is an abstraction of network resources, but not actual implementation. Someone still needs to actually create VPCs, create a subnet, and manage the IP address spaces and route network traffic. This is where MISA comes into play. MISA is one of the network implementation for multi tenant network model in Kubernetes. So now I will pass on to Sharif. He will present the detail of MISA design and implementation. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Sharif. I led the development of the MISAR project and I'm now a software engineer with Microsoft. We built MISAR from the ground up to accelerate Pulse network provisioning at scale. Actually, to rethink cloud networking in MISAR altogether, to build it in the exact same way as we build distributed systems in the cloud to make cloud networks simple to understand and simpler to operate. In the rest of this talk, I will walk you through our thought process and how MISAR works. From a high level, MISAR consists of a CRD operators, a daemon, and a CNI. The operators, the daemon, and the CNI are MISAR's management plan components. The daemon exposes a gRPC interface for the operator and the CNI. We eliminate any API from the worker nodes to the API server. This prevents operators failures to amplify as we add more workers to the cluster. On the, on the data plan side, MISAR consists of a set of multiple XDP programs, the process nodes packets. I will detail exactly how the XDB program processes the packets later. In this architecture, we rethink the data plan programming model to scale the management plan, accelerate pulp provisioning, and develop customized logic for network services. As a result, in, MISAR enables a scalable and multi-tenant Kubernetes networking. Before I detail how MISAR works, I would like to discuss the limitations of flow-based network programming. Flow-based network programming is the de facto programming model in virtual switches, including Open vSwitch. I will take OVN and OVS as an example. OVN uses the concept of logical ports to create a large logical switch that spans multiple hosts. With this model, creating 10,000 logical ports generates more than 40,000 port bindings. The logical switch approach does not scale as we increase the number of worker nodes of a cluster. Moreover, during flow programming, it's not uncommon to observe an increase in the CPU utilization during flow parsing. With the logical switch architecture, the time to provision network resources for each new container depends on the number of containers that already exist in the system and the number of worker nodes of the cluster. So clearly the logical switch approach restricts scale and is not suitable for dynamic cloud applications that have a short lifetime span like serverless. With the limitations of flow programming model in mind, we redesigned the host networking in MISAR to interconnect containers only with XDP programs. And to do this, we attach an XDP program on each physical interface of a worker node. We named this program Transit XDP. This program processes all ingress packets to the worker nodes. 
We also attach another XDP program on the VEF peer connecting a container in the root namespace. We call this program the transit agent. The transit agent attaches to the VEF peer to process all the egress traffic from each container. From a management plan perspective, all what we needed to do next is to expose the EPPF user space API as, GR as gRPC interfaces. The operator programs logical functions of the XDB program through these RPC interfaces. To understand the rule of virtual function, we need to look into the new network organization of Kubernetes that Mizar enables. We extended Kubernetes with two resources that we typically find in any multi-tenant cloud system, virtual private clouds, VPCs, and subnets within the VPCs. Creating VPCs and subnets is straightforward in Kubernetes with CRDs and operators. On the data plan, we introduced new logical functions within the XDP programs. The first logical function is bouncers within the network scope. And the second are dividers within the VPC scope. Unlike logical routers or switches, the bouncers and dividers are in-network distributed hash tables. And I will detail exactly how they work in the next few slides. Bouncers and dividers are the logical functions that make up the VPCs to isolate pods traffic for multi-tenant and allow tenants to reuse the same network address space. The user creates a VPC like any object in Kubernetes as a YAML file. The user specifies the side or range of the VPC and the number of VPC dividers. Because the divider is a distributed hash table, we can provide any number of dividers in the object definition with one being the default. When the VPC operator receives the VPC object, it schedules the VPC divider on one of the worker nodes of the cluster. Scheduling the divider does not mean that the operator runs any new code on the node. All what the operator does is labeling the selected host as a divider for the VPC. The Kubernetes operator also assigns a unique identifier for the VPC that the data plan uses to separate traffic, which is known as the virtual network identifier. After creating a VPC, the user now creates a subnet without, within the VPC. We also provide any number of bouncers to create for each network with one being the default. When the network operator receives the subnet object, it schedules the bouncers on some of the worker nodes of the cluster. Scheduling the bouncer involves two actions. First, the operator labels the host as bouncers on the management plan. Second, it programs the divider's worker node through RPC calls. The RPC call simply populates an EPPF map in the transit XDB program within the network, within the VPC, and the IP addresses of the hosts that are bouncers to these networks. In this example, Net1 has a bouncer1 and Net2 has a bouncer2. And both of them are populated in the EPPF map of the divider host. Now comes the interesting part where the user creates a pod within a multi-network, a multi-tenant network, natively in Kubernetes and similar to what you typically find in any cloud system. To do that, we use annotations of the pod object to specify the VPC and the subnet of the pod. Arctos controller adds the network and NIC annotations that I'm showing in these slides. The Mizar operator uses these annotations to provision the pod within the requested VPC and network boundary. The Mizar operator provisioned the network resources with a constant number of RPC calls, typically two. The number of RPC calls does not depend on the number of worker nodes in the cluster or the pods already provisioned. This is what allows the network provisioning to scale. The operator makes one call to the bouncer host of the subnet. And this call effectively adds an entry in one EPPF map with the IP address of the node hosting the pod. The other call provisions the VEF peer interface for the pod and make it ready for the CNI to consume. 
Internally, when the CNI adds the network interface, it makes a local call to the Mizar daemon to consume that interface. This design significantly simplifies the CNI. When the CNI adds an interface, it only consumes the interface that is already created by the Mizar daemon. The effect of this provisioning workflow is significantly better scale and significantly better time to provision networking for the pod. The time to provision network resources for the pod is now constant and independent on the number of worker nodes of the cluster, or even the number of pods already provisioned in the cluster. Compare this to Ovient, which does not scale well as we add more nodes in the cluster or if the number of pods existing already increases. Up until this point, I described the management plan operations, and in the next few slides, I will describe in detail how the XDB program on host process packets. Consider the case in which a pod with IP address 10.0.0.1 on host A sends a packet to a pod with an IP address 10.0.0.2 on host B. An XDB program intercepts the outgoing packet from the pod when the VEF peer receives it in the root namespace. The XDP program simply looks up a static configuration in an EPPF map and encapsulates the packet into a Geneve packet. It also assigns the virtual network identifier of the VPC in the Geneve header. Several tenants still use the same address space of the VPC where the network distinguishes traffic within a VPC by the VNI field. The only information available to the transit agent at this stage is the IP address of the bouncer. So it sends the packets to the bouncer by redirecting it for transmission on the physical interface. When the bouncer receives the packet, then an XDP program is first to process it on the bouncer host. The XDP program looks up the inner destination address of an EPPF map. Then, it rewrites the outer destination IP address to host C, which is the worker node running the destination pod 10002. When the packet arrives at host C, the XDP program decapsulates the packet and redirects it to the VE peer of the pod to receive it. This approach greatly simplifies the pod provisioning, but it has a serious drawback. All the packets now traverse one extra hop to reach their destination. I will now describe how we solve this entirely in XDP. To overcome the extra hub problem, we modified the XDP program running on the bouncer host to respond to ARP queries. Since we already have the pod's IP and MAC address configured by the Mizar operator when it provisioned the pod's network, so it makes sense to respond to ARP queries at this stage. When the pod at host A sends an ARP query, the bouncer responds with the MAC address of 10002, but it does not only respond to ARP queries. The bouncer also adds a Geneve option in the outer packet to tell the transit agent that 10002 is hosted at host C. When host A receives the ARP reply, it extracts the Geneve option and adds the host mapping information in its eBPF map. Now the transit agent of 10001 sends packets directly to the destination pod. And this direct communication happens from the very first packet of the flow and it remains throughout the pod's lifetime. There is no more there is one more detail here. When the transit agent sends a packet directly to the destination pod, it toggles one bit in a Geneve option to tell the destination host that the packet is sent directly from the source pod worker nodes and not from the bouncer. This allows the transit XDP at host C to also return packet directly to the source pod. And this simple mechanism allows all flows in the cluster to be direct without traversing the bouncer. And at the same time allows the management plan to provision the network by only making few RPC calls to a couple of hosts in the cluster, not all the hosts in the cluster. And if you think about the role of the bouncer now, comparing to, to a logical switch or a logical router in OVN, it is an in-network SDN controller rather than a virtual switch. It's like a microservice in the network that, provi that provides distributed functions to the endpoints. 
We take this observation to extend Mizar functionality beyond providing simple connectivity between the pods. Essentially, we extended the balancer functionality to implement Kubernetes services as well. This is best to be explained by an example. Consider the 1001 pod when, with sending packets to, one, to the 192.168.0 service. The transit agent XDP program first processed the packet, which knows nothing about the network except sending the packet to the bouncer at host B. When the bouncer receives the packet, it looks up the destination IP address of the inner packet and it reminds it is for a service IP. There are several decisions that the bouncer can make right now, including rewriting the inner destination IP address and sending the packet to a back end pod, like any conventional NAT or load balancer device. But I will describe a different approach. The bouncer instead adds the Geneva option of its decision. It instructs the pod's transit agent how the service should modify the inner packet. In the shown example, the modification option says to rewrite the service IP address to 10.0.0.4 and port 80. Then the bouncer returns the packet to the sender host, which is host A. The transit XDP program on the client's host add this information option in, any, in an EPPF map entry. Then it rewrites the packet according to the, accordingly and resends the packet again, but this time not to the service IP, but to the back end pod 10.0.0.4. From this point forward, the transit agent sends all the packets for this flow to the back end pod and again without going through the bouncers. IP tables, or any other intermediate step. This powerful concept enabled by XDB and Kubernetes operators allow us to scale the services and replace QProxy without compromising the advantage of direct communication between pods over service IPs. Mizar scales out the number of bouncers and dividers in the network to become a distributed in-network controller that serves any traffic. The transit agent also implements a load balancing function on the outer IP header to rebalance the traffic at to the bouncers. But we typically find that a single bouncer is enough in most cases, as it only processes ARP queries and the first packets of flows. With this, I have provided an overview of Mizar, and there's a lot of a lot more to it in the probe map. And I conclude this talk, and we will now play a recorded demo before moving to the Q&A. Thank you very much. Hi, for this demo today, we have a three node Kubernetes cluster using Kind with Mizar installed. Mizar is installed on this cluster via a daemon set and an operator appointment. We bootstrap the cluster with a default VPC and network, each with their own divider and bouncer. Here, we use Mizar's simple endpoints to deploy pods. Now on each node, we see that an XDP program is loaded on the main interface, and on the V device in the root namespace, we load the agent XDP program. Next, we demonstrate ping on the two recently created pods. Next, we will create another VPC with two subnets. The VPC has two dividers, and here, each of its subnets will have a single bouncer. Now, for each of these subnets, we will create an endpoint, or a pod. Now, with these two recently created pods, we will demonstrate cross-net ping. And here, to demonstrate network isolation, we will try to ping across VPCs. Now, we will demonstrate our operator provisioning 40 endpoints.
Regardless of the existing number of endpoints or pods on the system, all subsequent endpoints are provisioned at a constant time of about 0.35 seconds. Now in the next section, we demonstrate intra and inter-network direct path. For inter-network direct path, only the first ARP packet goes through the bouncer. Once both sides have cached the endpoint host information, any traffic thereafter will only flow between the two endpoint hosts. For inter-network direct path, the first ARP packet goes through the divider and both bouncers. Here, the divider and the two endpoint hosts must cache the host information. Once all three have cached the endpoint host information, any traffic thereafter will flow between the two endpoint hosts and the divider as an intermediary. Finally, in this part of the demo, we demonstrate using Mizar scaled endpoint as a replacement for the Kubernetes cluster IP service. When a service is created, Mizar creates a corresponding scaled endpoint. Here, we label the two recently created pods to add them as back ends for the scaled endpoint. Now for this demonstration, we will curl the service from our third pod, and in the reply, we will see that the service replies with the pod name of one of the backends. Here, both pod1 and pod2 reply to curl. We can also ping the service. This is possible because of the current scaled endpoint implementation.